Hey everybody, Ron here with Solo Operative Games. Today I'm in Tabletop Simulator. We're going to play a solo game of Ezra and Nehemiah. This is by Garfield Games, created by Shem Phillips and Sam McDonald. So if you've been to my channel, you know I love their games. I've played them all um, and I'm really excited to bring this playthrough of the solo mode to you. Uh, this game is currently on Kickstarter uh, and it has a download for both the rulebook and for the tabletop simulator mod, so you can go check it out before you back it or not. Um, I'm not compensated or asked to do this video in any way. I just do it out of uh, love of the games and uh, having fun making the videos. So let me know what you think about this game and do you plan to back it or not or wait for retail or whatever and just not interested. Uh, as far as the game, it is uh, biblically themed, but it's more historical than religious. There's no preaching here or really any religious you know, actions at all. Uh, it's just kind of the theme that's put on top of a point salad Euro. Uh, it's got a lot of mechanics uh, from other uh, Garfield Games games. Uh, you'll see some like Paladin and Viking mechanics, uh, Architects, Raiders, different <laughs> different games that they've already built, taking some mechanics that work well in those, bringing it here. Um, Ezra Nohaya takes place over three weeks. There'll be six days where we're doing actions, and then a seventh day, which is the Sabbath day, which we'll be we'll scoring. After the three weeks, we'll do a final scoring. Highest uh, person points wins. Uh, in the solo, we play against a bot that simulates a real player. Uh, so by watching this video, you'll learn a lot about the solo mode as well as how a uh, uh, normal game would go. It does play up to four players and uh, plays in a couple hours. It is quite heavy. Uh, so it's not one of the lighter Shem Phillips games, um, but it's a really good game. So let's get started. Uh, this will just be a learn as we play game, like all my videos. And let's start. We're going to, um, Sam has put in a ton of automation scripts into the TTS mod, which is always appreciated. We can click solo here. Two options between standard and hard. The bot will work the same way on both difficulties, it'll just score a lot more points on hard. I'm not good enough yet to beat it on hard and I don't wanna get embarrassed. So we're gonna go on standard mode. Uh, and we've get a few things to do on setup. First, we're gonna collect, connect, select, there we go, a scenario. There are four different scenario here. We can pick one or we can just randomize it. I'll just go random. Uh, it's not gonna affect the game too much but it's just a few rewards that we'll get based on how far up this little track we go. Uh, so we can aim for the getting those rewards. The other thing we need to do to set up is we start with two gatekeepers and we need to put them on two of the corner gates. I get to pick both of mine and then the bot will get the other two. Um, so what I'm looking for is a cheap gates <laughs> or cheap walls to clear rubble there are four types of rubble cinders are black wood is brown stone is white and gold is yellow and it goes up in value um, in that order so clearing out cinders is much easier than clearing gold but obviously you're going to get better rewards if you clear other stuff out um, i'm looking at this old gate over here which has a two cinder um, clear which is really easy to get rid of and would get me a red blessing right away um and then yeah also i think this one over here looks pretty good this one's not bad as well um let me look at this cost to build two wood and a stone two wood and a stone one wood two stone two wood stone so i think i want variety maybe so i think this one might be better let's do this too so i'm gonna go opposite top right bottom left and then he gets the other two and those will be our starting gate keepers i think we're ready to go uh bot on normal difficulty starts with one worker two coins and zero gold as shown here in hard they get some extra stuff we start with six workers three food five coins and uh varying amounts of uh, rubble based on this card these are asymmetric so you're dealt a set of five of them um mine i have a little bit better storage i can hold eight things um and then my other nice thing is i can gain three red banners and you'll hear see what, what that means later 
but everything else is kind of normal. Um, so based on randomly getting these uh, tiles, you'll have different benefits and some are better than others. And then you can always upgrade them to get even better tiles and stuff. Okay, so the bot. They're gonna take, again, as we said, six turns. And in each turn, they're going to, uh, per, per week, each turn they're gonna flip over one focus card of the 10, so they're gonna see six out of these 10 cards every round. And they're gonna flip over one scheme card, and there are only six of these, so they'll see all of these cards every round. Um, but they are shuffled and randomized, so you don't know what order they're gonna come out. First thing they do is flip over the focus, and they're gonna try and make a trade if they can. Um, and that's shown at the bottom. They'll do the best trade they're able to do, but that since they only have two coins right now, this is the only trade, uh, this one coin for one purple blessing. And so they're gonna do that. So trade the coin in, gain a purple blessing, piece of cake. Then they're gonna reveal their scheme card. And they're gonna go top to bottom and see if they meet the requirements of each action. If they don't, they'll move to the next one. As soon as they find one they satisfy, then they'll do that action. So do they have a worker in two gold? No. Do they have two gold? No. So they do the bottom, which is no requirements, just get a worker and a gold. Workers are limited supply, whereas all the rest of the resources are unlimited. Okay, so that is their whole turn. Real easy turns. For us, we have a deck of 10 cards and we're gonna draw four at the start. And we're gonna play one in our tableau here. And we get to play up to three visible cards. Once we have three visible, then we start covering them up. And Vikant style, all the visible cards contribute to the action that you get to do and the kind of how powerful it is. Three different actions, red, gray, and blue. They don't really have names, they're just, I'm doing a red action or whatever, you know? Um, so based on the card you play, it's gonna be a stronger action. So I could play the singer right now, do a red action with strength three, or I could do a gatherer and I could do any action. I mean, you can always do any action, but they're all gonna be power one. So maybe not the best. Um, so I think, <laughs> now here's the fun part. At the very beginning, you only have, you're placing one card down. So you don't have a lot to go on, right? Other than you can get some banners and maybe you put a worker up here to get some additional free banners. Um, I think some good opening moves are to go uh, recruit either Ezra, Zerubbabel, or Nehemiah and get them working for you because they bring with them a permanent banner plus some rewards, so all good stuff. Um, and that takes three blue and two coins. Well, I have the money. I can't get three blue unless I put a worker up here. Uh, and then I would need one more blue. So I could really just do the gatherer and just get a three blue that way. Cause I don't have, there is one guy in this deck that just has three blue. And if I, if he comes out, I'm playing him first turn, like almost always just to get one of these guys. Um, the other opening option we could do is go into the red and we could uh, send out a Levite, turn one of our workers into a Levite, which means we no longer have to feed them. They're just working at the temple. They, they live off the offerings at the temple. Um, and that would allow us to burn some of our material at the altar to move up this track. And there are some really good rewards, like extra workers, uh, if we can get high enough on this track. So that's not a bad first move. Um, and then we also set up a way that we could just get two cinders, right, with, with two gray actions. Each cinder costs one banner. So if we played a two gray jeweler, uh, we could um take those two cinders um but i think <laughs> trying to plan this out i think i do want to just get get one of ezra and Amaya. so i'm going to put down the gather since i don't have a triple blue dude i'm going to need to do this anyway to get two more so might as well not play the scholar and waste one of them okay and then i can uh do an auxiliary action at either before or after my main action and that can be either trade with this card or spend these resources to flip over one of my tiles and i don't have enough to do that so i'll go and do the trade and the trade says uh send one to the muster gate so 
uh, in a two-player game, nobody controls the muster gate, so it just goes to the bank. And then I've got to pay either one or five coins. We only have four, so I'll just pay the one. And the uh, trade is I get one stone and one wood. Okay. And then I think my mouse is running out of battery. Let me plug it in real quick. Nope, not going to happen. I don't know where the charger went. Let me find it. Would not be good to run out of battery in the middle of the play. Okay, sorry about that. Let's keep going. So where were we? We played the gather down, we did the trade, got our stone and wood. So now we need to do our main action. And remember I've placed this worker to get two blue banners plus the thing gives me a total of three. And now I can go get any of these uh, people to work for me. I do have to pay three blue banners, which I have, and two coins. So we'll do that. Who do we want? Well, uh, what banner do we want? What reward do we want? I think I would love a stone. Um, and looking at, these are kind of like technologies, research track, I don't know, they're, they're yeah. <laughs> Things you can research to kind of give you some benefits. Um, over, other than recruiting one of these three profits, we can um, go up and this says during Sabbath, we would move up three on the altar track, which is great, especially if you get it early on. That means you would move up nine total over the course of the game. Really cool if you get that round one. Um, this one is nice too. It says anytime you move your tent at least twice during a single turn, you get to move it a third time for free. Uh, and this one is nice because your traders and gatekeepers, you don't have to feed them. So that could save me a lot of food. All great stuff. But I think I like this one the best. So let's get Ezra. And uh, by getting Ezra, then I can get the next one without, without having to pay the bank. So I'm going to move that one up. I'm going to put my guy there instead. All right, Ezra, come work for me. Come join my tribe. Um, this gets tucked. I don't remember the hotkey and tabletop simulator to tuck underneath. So we'll just put it like that. Uh, so Ezra is going to give us a cinder because we got him in the first week. We have a lot of cinders here. We need five, though, to flip that card. Um, and then a permanent blue. Action. Uh, and he gets just kind of tucked underneath this little pocket. Okay. Um, so I did my three banners, my two coins, got Ezra. And he'll get one point at the end of the game. But I do still have to feed the scholar as he's working, researching, whatever. Um feed him one bread at the end of the round and that's my turn they'll start going faster i'm just trying to explain everything as we go all right so we will uh bots next focus card is a trade he needs at least three coins he only has one whenever he cannot do a trade he's going to instead move uh, his tent uh, this tent just goes around jerusalem and every time it passes over something it gets that reward this first one is a red blessing so now he's up twice there Um, yep, so he's good. And then his, as far as his scheme, uh, he does not have two workers and two gold, uh, but he does have zero to one gold, so he gets two gold. Cool, that was his turn. Back to us. Uh, you draw a card at the end of your turn, so you can be planning out your next turn while the other players are going. All right, so we drew the teacher, so we could do a pretty powerful blue. If I had enough coins, I would do it for sure. I actually do have enough coins, so I'm going to do this. Um, so I have one, two, three, four, five blue uh, banners, which means I could get this if I had three coins. Well, his trade is trade food for coins. So let's trade all our food. Who needs food? <laughs> yeah, let's do it right now. All three of our food gives us six coins. Because I can do that unlimited turn trades. 
teacher is awesome turn all your food into money i don't know how he did it but he's he's really cool uh so that's my trade now my main action again five blue so i will put a worker here move that guy up because i own a path i can trace a path to the bottom through my own workers i don't have to pay any to the bank or to the bot player um i just have to pay this so that's three so put the five and get two back and because i'm the first one to go to this track level i get this food for free so do i i could have done my trade after no i needed to do it my trade before so i had enough money so We've already done our trade. We can't trade this bread as well. Uh, but yeah, so now not only do I have Ezra joining me, I can now every Sabbath move up three times on the altar. It's only 18 long, and I'm going to get nine bumps in the game. So basically, I short, I cut this in half, this track, to get to the top. Very nice. Um, sounds good. So that is my turn. Yeah. Bot, he is going to try and trade the Valley Gate. He cannot. He needs at least two gold, so he'll move his tent again. Look, gives him two silver. And then his scheme. Now he does have two workers, two gold. So he's going to uh, research as well, and he wants to go as high as he can. Well, I've provided him a way to go all the way to the top if he can and just trace back through us. Um, but he would need, well, three coins. He has that. Um, but also he would need four gold because he's going to level four. He can't do that. He's only got three gold. So he will do the highest he's able to, which will be one of these two. Because there's, uh, he can't do any of these. There's nothing below it. So whenever there's a choice between two, he takes this card here and, oops, <laughs> splits it in half. And then wherever this little uh, marker is, uh, he'll take that action. So he's going to go to the left side. If there were three, you divide it into thirds, and then he would do the middle. Or if there's four choices, you divide it into four, then he would do the second choice. So this is kind of a tiebreaker decision-making card as well. So uh, he's going to go the left side, which is this one here. Place his Scholar. It's level three, so he'll play three gold. And then he doesn't pay, let's see. Um, paying required gold, I gain silver from the main supply. They must pay silver to use white workers. All right, so they cheat a little bit because i am they're using my technology to get here. I just get stuff from the bank. So they use two purple workers, I get two coins. They don't have to spend any. If there was a white here, they would spend one to the bank. Uh, and they were the first to go here. So they get this two bread, but they don't deal bread. They always get money when they would get bread. That's shown here. And that is their turn. Wow. So they got a really nice technology. They don't actually care about this technology. All they care about is they're going to get three victory points at the end of the game. Okay, so to me, where do we want to go? It seems like the obvious choice is to go a scholar, and now I have seven blue banners, so I could go to the top if I spent two gold. I don't have two gold. No way to get two gold. Um, so is there a way to? Get, there is the way of the jeweler would let me buy gold. It's pretty expensive. I could just do gray actions and clear out some some gold rubble. Um, but I think I want to get more cinders so I can flip this card over. Or I could get some more money. I have six money, so if I can just get one more money, I can flip this one over. Um, the way to get money would be to play the singer, but I don't have any gold. The other way to get money would be to build a gate. I don't think I'd have enough for that either. Um, where else can I get money? I can build on the second level of the temple, it gives me coin. Um, if I get two bumps on the tent track, I could get two money. So a lot of different ways I can do it. Um, 
Could I get up to seven blue banners? I have one, two, three, four, five. That's it. Six, seven. Cool. Uh, and since I'm about to get two coins, that gives me eight, and I only needed seven to flip. Um, oh, no, but I want to do... Ah, shoot. If I'm flipping, I can't trade. Is this an okay trade to miss out on? Or do we do it next time? I think we can do it next time. Well, I don't think we're going to run out of storage in a while, in, right away. We're going to get gold. We're going to get a stone. Yeah, I'm okay. So I'm going to pay one to the valley gate. And then I get a stone. Now, since nobody owns that gate, it just the money just sits there. And then whoever builds this gate will collect all the money on it. All right, so that's my trade. I have seven blue. I need to spend one resource, so I'll go ahead and spend a wood. Sure. I don't want to spend cinders because I'm trying to get the five cinders as well. Um, and that will give me seven blue banners and a resource gives me three tent moves. So a red blessing. Stay in your home there. Two coins. And a gold. There we go. Cool. And that's my turn. Now, bot, they do have, oh, they have all five they need. And that will give them four victory points. You start at 10 because you can lose points, <laughs> especially like, I don't know, this one's not very, I don't know. That's one way to lose points is to not be high enough on this track. Um, the bot always uses this, so if they don't get up to the first level, they lose two. Um, anyway, so they got four points for their trade, but now they really have nothing. So I think they're just going to do this one, which is collect a gold and move up on the altar. Which gives them wood, or not wood, food, bread, but that always just gives them money instead. Um, actually, that's not right. Take that back. <laughs> I forgot to flip this card. So instead, they're going to do this one, which is gold and a worker. OK, yeah. So I always want to make sure these decks have the same number of cards. My turn. Um, so now that I've got three cards down, I need to put another card down, but I have to cover up one. So whatever I do, I'm losing some blue banners here if I want to do blue. but. Um, we don't care about the trade this turn because we're going to flip a card with our seven money. Um, so what do we, what trade do we not care about? <laughs> um, if I put you here, that is now four gray. I could get quite a few. Could collect a, a few things and I'm gonna flip it over yeah I think this is fine yeah because I don't want to do it blue anymore for this turn okay so I'm putting the mason down I'm not gonna do his trade instead I'll do the auxiliary action which is to flip over a thing so we'll do this one here cost me seven coins it's all my money uh, but I do get a tent uh, traveling here so which is a purple blessing and then I'm gonna flip this one over okay so now this says every Sabbath this little sundial here I get to pull back one of my workers uh, either in the shepherds or the traders um, so this guy will come back and then I can use that worker to then either go become a farmer or a miner or whatever craftsman <laughs> I don't know what that guy is he has a hammer um, but anyway, so yeah, I flipped one of these tiles. Cool. Lock it into place. And now you can see there's no more storage. I have unlimited storage now. There's, although it kind of locks into place because it's TTS, um, I can store as many cubes as I want. Okay, so bot player, strip card, not forget. They can't do a trade, so they'll move their tent, which gives them a gold. 
and they should be able to do this. This is do the uh, low the lowest research they can. Uh, so that's going to be either getting Zerubbabel or Nehemiah. Again, tiebreaker. They're going for the right side, so they're going to take Nehemiah. It's level one, so they'll spend one gold. And uh, they're not using anybody's workers, so they don't have to pay coins to anybody. And they gain the rewards from the hero card, so that will take Nehemiah. And they just get a cube, which is always gold for them. And they don't care about banners, so I can just throw this card away, but we'll keep it there to remember they did that. Did I forget to flip it again? <laughs> How did I forget to flip it again? I think whenever I go, oh, they can't make a trade, I always just, uh, okay. Let's take that, reverse it all again. So that comes back. This gold goes back and then comes back to them. This dude comes back here. Okay, fixed. Uh, take the worker back. Take the gold back. Oh, not the gold, don't worry. That was, the, that was last time. They got these. They have these. This is where they were. Okay. This is what they should be doing. They're going to go to the temple. Please, purple arrow, go where I see you. So they're going to do this one, which is paid two gold to place a Levite. And their Levite would give them a cinder, which for them is a gold. Uh, and then they will do as many actions as they have Levites. They have two. The primary thing they want to do is put gold on the temple, and they start from the bottom left. Uh, every gold you put in the temple gives you two points. Uh, and then they get rewards based on the row. The first one's nothing. Um, and then if they don't have any gold, he wants to do another action, doesn't have a gold, he'll spend silver to buy gold. He's an alchemist. Uh, he doesn't have that either. And so the third option is to just move his tent if he can do nothing else. So he'll do that and get a purple blessing. Okay, five and five, we're good. What do we want to do? Um, we can't over uh, place over the mason. There's already two cards here, so... We can't do that. Who do we want to cover up? The Gather or the Scholar? Um, I think I'd like to, if possible, clear and build, right? So if I could get six uh, banners, one to, two to clear out the black, and then four to build the wall, I would have to have three stone as well. So six gray banners and three stone. Well, I've already got two stone, and I could get a third by sending out a tradesman here. Um, I would then have my five cinders to flip this card. I think that's work. Can I get the gray banners I need? One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's do that. So I'm not gonna make a trade. Uh, instead, I'll do my main action, which would be gray. I'll clear out these for two. And then I'll send this dude here, which gives me a food. That's not food, that's food. And any resource I want, I want stone. Okay, and then I'm, uh, I get a red blessing for doing that one. I probably should have tried to get orange, but this one was just the, the one I could do with six gray. So then while I'm here, if I can build, I can do it. You can only select one, like, space. I can't, like, clear the whistle and clear this one or build here, clear here, whatever. So I'm doing it all in one space. I cleared two. I'm going to build this for four. Three stone. Okay. So when you build a wall, you draw three cards from this deck, and you pick one. <clears throat> Each one's going to have an immediate reward and a endgame scoring. Um, we are going to have to feed our people fairly soon, so getting two bread might not be a bad idea, since I only have two right now. Uh, getting gold would be great too, though. Hmm. I think I want gold. You'll see why. So I'm going to put that there. It's got my banner on it to show that I did it, uh, and I get the gold. Award. 
Okay, but then any time you build a wall next to a gate, you get a combo of whatever's on the gate. And you can do it either order, build the wall first or build the gate first. And anyone involved gets the reward. I don't see a blue player involved in here, so I'm the only one that gets it. I get a gold. Okay, that's my rewards. Now with the other two cards, I put one on top. I think I'll put the double food on top. This is like paladins. And then the other one goes to the bottom of the deck. Okay, uh, and then I can still do my auxiliary action. I actually have enough cinders to flip this one and enough gold to flip this one. So I think, let me look at the backs of each of these. That one's really nice. What's the back of this one look like? That just get to food during Sabbath. I think I'm gonna get both, but this one affects me right now. So I'll trade in the three gold. Uh, that lets me put a pull a worker back. So I'll pull this worker back and flip this over. Sweet. So I flipped two development tiles already. They each have some in-game points on them and all the better, better rewards and stuff. Cool. Okay, that's the end of that turn. The sixth turn for the bot. Uh, he cannot make a trade again, so he will move his tent. Gives him two bread, which gives him two coins. Then his scheme. He does not have two gold. He only has zero to one workers, so he gets a worker and a gold. Okay, that's his round. For me, I've got uh, one last action to do, and I have to cover up the gatherer. Um, again, I'm buying this tile so I'm not going to do the trade of whatever's offered. I don't have the coins anyway or the gold. So what would I like to do? I'm going to get three bumps on the altar. So it's okay that I'm so far back here. I'm going to make it to the gray. The gray, if I'm past Zechariah, I get to pull one of my workers back. Um, if I can make it past Haggai, I would get an extra worker. That would be really nice, but no way we're getting nine bumps here. Um, I can. I do have a worker available to get more red banners. And I could get food. I'm going to food here and then two food there. So it's one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to need to feed one, two gatekeepers, two scholars, and three workers. No, four workers. So I've got eight. I need eight wood, right? Eight food right now. And I'm going to get. I have two plus three. I have five in storage, basically. So that would be one more. That would be one more. If I could move my tent, I would get even more. So do we do a blue action? I could get, no, that's only three blue. It seems really weak to just do <laughs> a two blue action here. So maybe that's not where we get our wood. I mean, I can always send a worker into the fields to get wood, food. Why did I say wood? Food. It rhymes, apparently. Um, and I got to pull one of my guys back. I think I'll be fine on food. So I think we're going to do another gray action and try and get an orange thing. So for gray, these are both kind of crappy. Doesn't really matter. Um, actually, I want to save this red one. Let's do this one. Okay, so putting him down. I'm not doing his trade. Instead, I'm paying five cinders to flip this card, which gives me a bread. Okay, that was my upgrade. Uh, auxiliary. Now the main action will be gray. I have one, two, three, four, five, six gray. Uh, there was a gold, white, black one. Maybe not. That's seven, 
four, 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 two, two. This is five. Can I get enough to build again? I already got me. So I could put one guy here that gives you three extra banners and it would give me a coin. And you can use three banners to replace any one resource. So could I build a gate? There's money on gates. I would love to get the dung gate because it gives me a tent movement. Dung gate, I would get one stone. So this would be two, three, four, five. And then I would need six. I would need 11. <laughs> I don't think I can get 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No. Can't get that. What about Valley? That's the same boat. Are they all the same way? Oh, yeah, they all are. Watergate's a little bit cheaper. I think I still would need 10. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, I would need more because I'm not getting a stone. Okay, that ain't gonna happen. Um, I need one where the resources match <laughs> what's required to build it. Like this one. This one's not bad. It would cost four to get the resources, three to build the wall, so we're up to seven, and then three more for the missing so that's 10 again darn it i mean i could place two workers <laughs> get five i get 11. oh then i could get the, the gate is it worth it oh my gosh that would be so crazy i don't think it's worth it let's just not worry about that um let's just collect a bunch of resources then I just there's nothing I can do for six and so I'm kind of wasting it no matter what I do whatever um, let's just collect this one so that was five. Oh well we wasted one banner and our turn is now over we did pretty good we got three tiles flipped and uh, a wall built a couple scholars out we did not touch the temple track but we got uh, or the altar track, we've got a handle on that. We have not built anything in the temple. Okay, so how does Sabbath work? Well, you can flip over this card here, and it tells you exactly how it works. First thing we do is use our farmer's labors and resolve the prophet's judgment. So anything that has the sundial symbol, we can do that. Uh, I have a few here. The first one says pull back a worker, so that's good there. And then the second one is get to food. Um, and then the judgment, uh, oh wait, I also have this one, I'll just go up three here. So one, two, three, I get a food and a coin. Okay, now I'm going to need to feed two scholars, two gatekeepers, and four workers. So that's eight bread I need. I have six, so I'll send one guy here to the farm. That'll give me two bread and a coin. Okay, so I'm now covered on food. So I can just send the rest. Um, I'm gonna send one more because I am gonna need some bread next turn. So let's get two more bread and one more coin. And these guys will come down here. Uh, give me four resources. I know I wanted another stone, another wood builds this one or do I want to build a gate yeah that's probably fine so I got a stone of wood I can get two coins I can get four more coins basically let's do that so I have tons of money for trades I have no real planning. I'm just like, let's have some of everything, right? All right, so we're uh, that is done with our preparation. Uh, as far as the bots, they also have a 
checklist here. Resolve the Prophet's Judgment. They go to this board here. And they are behind the first, the lowest Prophet, Zachariah. So they actually lose two points as a penalty. He was very unhappy with them. Um, so that was the, the prepare. Now we go into Sabbath. So I'll do mine first. Pay one per worker. So I owe eight food. Okay, then lose two VP if we can't feed them. Then we tuck a character card. So we're gonna take one of these cards and you'll see at the top of it, uh, it has a scoring. And that is gonna score every single round. So which of these scores the most for me now and probably the whole game? Um, the gather is gonna give me one point plus one uh, point for every tile I flipped. So that would be four. And I could get a possibly two more. Uh, the teacher would give me my two highest things, which is only one and two. So I get three points, not great. The scholar would give me one plus the number of scholars. So again, three points. Uh, number of purple bumps, no, that's one point. Number of walls, I built one, so that's one point. And number red, two. So I think the gather is our best option. And she comes with a permanent gray banner. Okay. Uh, and I score it right now. So again, we said it was one plus the number flipped, so four total points. Yay. Okay. Uh, and that is that. For the bot, they're going to go through this scoring here. They're first going to get one coin for every worker they didn't spend. So it's like them going and gathering, whatever. Uh, then they're going to score their highest technology, which is level three, so three points. They're then going to get one point for whatever they have the most of, be it uh, scholars, Levites, or gatekeepers. Well, they have two scholars, two, no, one scholar, sorry, two gatekeepers and two Levites. So either way, it's two. Uh, then their furthest along blessing is two. And then the number of uh, flames they've passed. They haven't passed any flames, so zero for that. So after the first round of score, the bot is 21. I have 14. Not great. Uh, after the Sabbath, Um, oh, this has got level two on it. That's this level two difficulty. I was like, what is all this? <laughs> I don't want to give them more points. No, they skipped this because we're on level one difficulty. Uh, shuffle all their focus cards and scheme cards back into the drop piles. Okay, for us, um, move the profits. So our next level is going to be six and 11. 6 and 11 and it's going to have the same rewards but if we don't meet it we lose food so they're going to his are always the same um this comes to me i'll be first player now retrieve all our workers so we get all these workers back whoever is the leader on the altar is gonna get the altar reward bonus. I am currently a leader, so I get this bonus, which is one worker. Cool. Uh, shuffle all my cards that I did not pick. And that'll be my new draw pile. Okay, and then in round two, we'll draw an extra card because we'll be short one, but. Whatever the, the four cards we didn't play in week one, we now have to choose from in week two. And you can see that I saved a bunch of red. So I think we'll heavily invest in that track this round. Okay, let's get started then. So um, I know I'm gonna get three more bumps here. So I'm automatically gonna be higher than Zechariah and get the retrieval worker, but I'd like to get up to 11. So I need five more there. Um, and we can get us uh, started on that by going and burning wood or cinder at the altar. Two bumps for wood, one bump for a cinder. Uh, I think we want to do that. So let's get going on that. We need to do a red action basically and might as well do the strongest red action we can. 
Oh, those Zerubbabel's available. Uh, I don't have blue. I would need three blue. I need to get three blue. <laughs> no, we're doing this. Right? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so the first we can do a trade, and I don't really need gold right now, so I will go ahead and... Yeah, I'm going to send the gold away and three money. Probably not a good trade, but we'll do it. Um, and now I have three red actions, but the first thing I can do is place a Levite if I wish. So two bread. That's why I saved two bread here. Place this as a Levite, which gives me a cinder. And with three red, I can either build in the temple or put some stuff on the altar. But I get to do two actions because I have I get to do one action per Levite. But you can also always also convert a Levite into a red banner for that turn. So I could do two actions with three red banners or one action with four red banners. Um, and I want to build, I want to do this, but I think I also want to do more. So I'm going to send this here and now I have seven. I have two and seven. So the first thing will be to burn wood and that will give me two bumps here. One, two, a orange blessing. And now I'm everybody's past this threshold, so that gives me another bump. And I get a gold. Okay. Uh, so I'm now down to four and one. Um, so I could go burn another wood if I go get wood. Or I could place something into the temple. I think I'm going to place something in the temple. So I've got gold now. I'll go ahead and place it on level four. I do get two points for placing it in the temple. And then I this row gives me a tent movement. Gives me, whoa, my tent has tumbled. Come back, tent. Two wood, or two food. I don't know why I say wood whenever I mean food. It just happens. So that was my full action. I did two actions with seven value. Okay. Bot gets to go. Trade at the dung gate. He's going to trade one to the dung gate and one to the bank to get a gold. Scheme. They have two gold, so they're going to let's flip this back. Uh, clear rubble and build a wall. Um, so whenever they are deciding where to clear or build, they look at this uh, decider and then wherever this. Um, marker is so it's at the dung gate going to the right um, and they want to build a wall so they're going to clear out a wall so even though they could clear out the dung gate they want to clear out the next wall from that going counterclockwise so they're going to take three. Oh, that was nice for them one two three Okay, so that was their clear the rubble, but now they tried to build a wall that cost them three gold always, so they cleared everything they needed. Uh, build the target gate or wall, placing a gatekeeper, gain the wards on walls. So they just take the top one. Uh, forgot to give them a red blessing. This one gives them wood which is a gold okay and there's no gate next to it so no combos but if i bid, did build the dung gate that now is combo we both get uh cube and money which is pretty cool so i might try to do that all right that's their turn back to us we've got a lot of red so we probably want to keep going with red um, but I want to try and bring out some gray as well. So let's get the carpenter out. And he's going to cost one to the dung gate. Now I really want to build this. <laughs> and two more to get two wood. Okay. 
Do not like stack. I want to see how much I have. There we go. Um, so we did that. Now I've got five red. I can build. Well, I need another food to get another Levite. So we'll go ahead and send a worker here to get two coins and the wood. Spend all three wood. To put this worker here. Gets a stone back. And now I have three actions with five banners. Um, let's go ahead and change one of these um, workers into a banner. And so I'll now have two workers with six, and that means I can build burn two wood for four bumps. So one, two, three, four. I'll get a purple and a red blessing and a wood. Or no, a food. Just punch me in the face every time I say that wrong. Cool. Uh, and we need to figure out a way to get a stone next time, if possible. But it's the bot's turn. Okay, the bot. Trading at the water gate. It will do this. So one to the water gate. One to the bank for a bump. Hey, he went up the track. That's his first time. Gets coin for the bread. Uh, does he have... Uh, nope, flip this first. Don't forget to do that. Uh, two workers and two gold. Yes. So he's going to try and research again. Uh, the highest one he can do is again level three. There's only one choice. So spend three gold the worker here um, he's got to pay me but I just get from the bank we are loaded with money holy crap uh, so he's done that yep so that's pretty good for him that's gonna be six points at the end of the, uh, the game can get rid of this wood here for my action. What am I going to do? Do I want to convert over to gray yet to build that gate? Um, I'm going to need two for this, three for the, the wall, and then do I have the stuff? I would not have the wood. But I also want to get a stone Yeah, I think I know what I want to do. I'm going to play the Mason. Uh, I will not be doing the trade. And I have five gray banners. One, two, three, four, five. And I'll use that to clear off one of these. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So that was three plus two is five. So that's everything I get. Uh, and then I will, I could, I could build the wall, but I want to flip. So one, two, three, four stone uh, to flip this tile. It does give me a worker as a reward. And you can see the, now I can, send a worker out to get gold or to move my tent nice options there okay that's my turn bot is going to spend one silver to get a red blessing he needs to get some orange stat uh and then it's scheme it doesn't have yeah it just gets two gold okay for me I want to stay in. Hmm. I've already done the the dung gate would have been nice because I could have bought wood to flip this last tile. I definitely want to flip this one some point because it gives me points at the end of the round. So I'm trying to get four wood. There are there is wood out there. 
but I also really want to build this this dung gate right now. So let's get some more gray banners out. Um, do I want to do this trade? I don't really need the cinder for anything. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and trade the cinder in for a coin. <laughs> I have so much money. Um, and now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven banners. So that will build two to take the stone, three for the wall, oh, I'm one short. Because I can, I can use gold in place of any material, but I would need three banners to replace the other one. So that would have been two for this, three, it's five, six, seven, eight. And I only have seven. I don't think it's worth spending th a whole worker just to get three more. Um, so let's put that one back. Oh, I can just get a resource. Let's do that. Oh, no, no, I have to play, I have to have another extra resource. That doesn't work. So maybe we do gray next time. I build a dung gate, and this time we just collect what we need. So with seven, I could collect all of this, or I could collect this. But this is what I need. So that's only six, but that's all right. It's what we need. We'll grab it. We'll be done. Okay. Bot's turn. Uh, it cannot trade, so move its tent, gaining a worker. And then its scheme. Uh, it does have enough to do the top. So pay two gold to place a Levite. It's going to do uh, get a gold back. Its first action will be placing a gold here for two points and a coin. Second action will be trading the coin in for a gold. And third action will be placing the gold here for two points and a bread, which is a coin. That's It's three Levite actions, so we're good there. All right, back to us, turn number five. I only have one guy with gray. That's a bummer. Um, I think we're okay now because we got what we need. So we'll put the soldier down here. And I might as well trade <laughs> the seven for two. So one to the fish gate. And then six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's why you have so much money for two workers. Brilliant. Okay, and now gray, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll do two to clear this stone, and then three to build it. Um, for clearing it, we don't get anything because it's a gate. Oh, I don't know if I gained an orange blessing for that one. No, I did, a, I did this one, right? Yeah, I did that one, a purple blessing. I should have two on the orange though, because didn't I clear this one or did he clear that one? I for sure cleared that one. Because he cleared here. Okay, so yeah, there there's where I should have got one plus two orange. So I I missed that. Oh well. Another worker. Okay, so we paid all of our resources to build the dung gate. So I get all this money. It's great. The dung gate goes here. I place a, oops, a gatekeeper. Uh, that gatekeeper lets me move my tent one more for another orange blessing, which gives me two wood or food. And uh, we have now comboed a gate next to a wall, and it's both colors, so we both get this reward. I'll take. 
wood and coin. He's actually going to get a gold and a coin. Cheater. And now the Dungate is built. Cool. Any other um, future trades that say Dungate on them, I don't have to pay that gate fee for. And if uh, he's trying to trade at the Dungate, I get the money. So pretty cool. Um, is that my full turn? I had some extra gray banners, but I think we're good. Okay, for the bot, try to get the old gate. He doesn't have enough. So he'll get an orange. Hey, you got orange. So he moves up on the altar. Gets him a coin. His scheme. Uh, he does have this one, the top one. So he's going to uh, pay one gold. Uh, the tiebreaker is the left, so he's going to take Zerubbabel. Uh, it is the second week, so he'll get two bread, which will be silver, and a gold. Uh, and then the coin here says he also gets a money. And that's his thing. Okay, so Zerubbabel's taken. Uh, Nehemiah is still there. It's a stone and a gold. I probably want to get him. Um, and this is what my last action yes so I'm going to replace the mason he's not going to be available um, I want to get wood I have one I need to get three more how can I get three more spend a guy here and then clear out this rubble so I need to Replace the mason with the jeweler, I think. Okay. So that's two on every pile. Yep. All right, the jeweler, uh, yeah, I'll send one to the east gate. Nobody open owns east, right? Yeah, east is the banks. Uh, and then four more. One, two, three, four. Four, there we go. To get two gold. Thank you for your trade, Miss Jeweler. Uh, and now gray action, one, two, three, four, five, six. I can clear out, oh, I'm so close. Is there anywhere else, where's two wood? Dang it. There is a promo tile. I don't see it out, but it allows you to buy banners with money. <laughs> it would be so good right now. Um. Could just do this one, getting an extra bread. That would give me a gold. Yeah, it's worth it. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I can get all this. And then I'll spend this dude. Oh no, hold on. I can't get the gold because I want to do an upgrade. Auxiliary. So let's put the two gold back and get my five gold silver that I spent to her. So I didn't do the trade after all. Uh, this worker goes here for a wood and a bread. I cleared it out, which gave me a, an orange blessing. And now one, two, three, four. Uh, gives me another orange blessing. Flip this. And now I can get gold. Cool. So we managed to get all our developments flipped over. That's great. And I think that's the end. Oh, it would have been nice if I could get... Oh, no, I'm getting three more bumps, can't I? So, yeah, we're good there. So the bot's last turn. Trading four coins for a purple blessing and a tent movement which gives them an altar movement action is a worker in gold okay that's the end of the second week so we'll go into preparation for sabbath again i get to pull one of my workers back it doesn't really matter which one i get two bread uh, and i get 
three bumps on the altar. One, two, three. That's a coin and a tent movement, which is another bump, which is a bread. <laughs> Starts comboing and it goes crazy. Okay, that's my prep. Um, I am above the highest guy, so I get a worker. And then for his prep, he is below so he loses two more points this is great uh that's his prep and then we go into sabbath scoring so i'll pay one per worker now i have one two three oh i guess i gotta use my farmers and labors so let's let's figure that out first i have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve there's 16, so there's one here and four Levites, so that adds up. I have 12 workers to pay. I need 12 bread. Now this is eight, so I'm going to need um, to get four more for sure. That will also give me two coins for those guys. Okay. Um, now... The other guys I think will go here. And I'm just gonna spam the temple, I think. No, I wanna get a lot of blue. So blue, I need money. So let's get the gold money one. So I will get two gold for money. I have plenty of money now to just put as many scholars out as I can get blue banners for at the end of the game. Okay. Um, so pay my workers. Here's my 12 bread. And then I get a tuck in the second round, two cards. So let's look at what we have available. I would like to tuck guys to give me blue banners, but this is the only one. Um... He's scored for red. That's only three. Score for walls. I only have one wall. Uh, score for Levites. I have three. Uh, flames. I've passed four. Uh, gatekeepers. I have three. So that's four. Where's the orange? Do oh, it's here. I should use the musician. Maybe that would have been five. Um. Yeah, so it's one of the fours, probably. I think I plan to get to the end of the track, so he's going to definitely score six in the third round. So let's get him. And then... Hmm. I need blue banners. Also, he's better in my hand, isn't he? So let's do the lookout. Okay, so now I'm going to score for all of the tuck cards. Uh, we know that we have done all our fiber developments, so this is going to be six points. Then we have four flames. And we have three gatekeepers plus one, so four more. Okay, so that's my Sabbath scoring. For him... Uh, get some money for unused workers. Score his highest uh, thing, which is three. Then what does he have the most of? Two scholars, three Levites, two gatekeepers, so three. Then he will. His furthest uh, blessing is three. And his number of flames is one. So much closer game now, pretty good. Uh, that was the end of Sabbath. So he will shuffle these. And he's ready to go. He's the first player. Um, I need to take all these and draw one. Um, take all my workers back.
move the profits. The profits are now going to be at 10 and 14. Well, I'm already past the top guy, so that's five victory points. That's great. Um, oh, I'm also the altar leader, so I get another worker. That's all my workers. Cool. Uh, you can see in this track, if you need to get a worker and you can't, you just move your tent instead. Look at all these workers. Holy moly. Okay. Um, they're all going to become scholars if I can help it. So let's make sure we move the things, we retrieved all our workers, we did the altar leader, shuffled our play cards, and passed our shvar. Okay, so he gets to go first in the third week. He is paying one to the dung gate. Hey, that's me. Thank you. And one to the bank to get a gold. And his scheme. Uh, he will build a wall starting at the dung gate moving right. So he's going to clear this one. Clear two rubble. Get two gold. Blessing for that is purple. And then he will spend three gold, build it as one victory point. That's me. <laughs> Let's move blue. Um, this is not next to a gate, so he does not get any linking bonus. Okay, for us, what are we going to do? I would like to build this wall. Um, I would like to put out a ton of guys on endgame scoring. So let's look at those first. So one, the first one is one point for every scribe that we have in the bottom three rows. Okay. This one is normally you get one point for five. This would make it one point for three and replace that. And then this one is two VP per scribe you have in the top row. Okay, and we can't access the others because there's nothing here. I do want to get Nehemiah. I think I should just go get Nehemiah right now. So let's put down this scholar. And I will go ahead. Now, I'm, I want to do trades, but that there's a scoring thing that says have a lot of money at the end of the game for points. So maybe I just don't do trades. Um, but I do need... Oh, no, I need wood there. So, yeah, I think I'm not going to do the trade. I'm just going to say, sorry, Valley Gate. I don't want your stone. Uh, but I do have three blue banners. So we'll do three blue and two coins to put a dude here. That collects Nehemiah. Tucks him. Now it's the third week, so I get all of this. A stone, a gold, and a bump on any track. Let's just go ahead and take purple. Okay, look at all these banners I've got tucked now. Um, that was my turn. I could pay a worker to get that. No, I don't think I'll worry about that. Okay, his second turn, he does not have the money, so he'll move this and get two points. And then his scheme to gold. Wow, he's going to do it again. Okay. <laughs> uh, starting at the mustard gate, he wants to build a wall. So that would be this one. Nope, not that one. This one. Which gives him two gold. And he spends three. Uh, he gets a purple blessing. Did I forget to give him his... Yeah, no, okay, he got one point. Um, he gets a worker. And he does create a linking bonus between the two of us. So I get a stone and a silver. He gets a silver and a gold. For those two. Cool. Okay. Um, perfect. Let's get all these blue stuff out. So if I want to go, I want to go to the top right now and get that money one. I'm going to need seven banners. So I have one, two, three. 
I think I'm going to play Hmm. <laughs> There's a really good combo with the teacher musician. Retrade all your money into food and then all your food back into money. They end up with more than you started with. <laughs> you get double your money, basically. So I think I want to do that. Let's do the musician. And I'll do the trade one to the water gate and five to the bank to get six food. Okay. And then I'll do an action. I have one, two, three, four blue banners. A worker here gives me a cinder and three more blue banners. So I have seven. I'll spend two gold and all seven banners to put a scholar, scribe, whatever up here. Um, I need to pay the bot player one coin to use one of their technologies to get down to the bottom. Uh, but I do collect this food, so I'm the first to that row. Cool. Okay, that's it. Back to the bot. I guess I'm going to draw a card. Sheep gate. Uh, they can spend one to get a red blessing. I really need orange. Uh, scheme. Tours two gold. Yep, they'll play two gold to get a Levite. That gives them one gold back. They have four temple actions. Oh, this is bad. They're going to finish the temple. Oh, well. So they finished that. That gives them two points and a worker. Then, because a row is finished, whoever finishes it gets two bread. I, was, I should have done this. Oh, well. Uh, so that's two coins for them. Then whoever has the most Levites gets two points and they beat me. Uh, and then everybody gets a coin per Levite. So four to them, three to me. Okay, so that was only their first thing. Now they, uh, they'll buy a gold for their second, spend the gold for their third, and then buy a gold for their fourth. Okay, I think they did everything right there. Uh, for me, we'll put out the teacher, and I can trade five, six, seven, eight, nine bread, food, whatever, for. This is infinite, nine bread for 18 money. <laughs> oh, we're racking up the points. This is awesome. Okay. Uh, now my blue action is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, spend two gold. And I will go ahead and grab, bump this one out of the way. You're gone. I do owe a coin to the bot. Uh, but now I will get, that's worth three points. Oh wait, this one's worth four. Let's get that one instead. So the bot, ah, eh, the banker's still here. Okay. That works. Okay. Um, bot's turn. Spend four. One, two, three, four. For a, they got their orange bump. Oops, which is a altar, which is another orange bump, which is a gold. And then they get to move their tent. Red bump. Okay. Scheme. They have the top, so they'll spend two gold to place a Levite. Uh, the reward here is any whatever their I think they're weakest on? Yeah, their weakest one plus two points. So that'll give them the gold. And now they have five Levite actions. First one, spend a gold, two points, and a coin. Second action, buy gold. Third action, spend a gold, two points, coin. Fourth action, buy gold. Fifth action, spend a gold. Two points 
tent movement. Two coins. That was nice for them. <laughs> oh man, I don't want them to do another temple turn. But an opportunity has presented itself. <laughs> Does it help them more than it helps us? We have a gold, so we could spend it there. Which was do two points. We get a worker, which would turn into a tent movement, which is also two points. And we get two bread for finishing a column. They still have the most Levites, so they would get two points. But then we would get four money, which is a point for us. And not doesn't affect them, really. So I think if I can get five red banners, I should do that. Hey, look, we can. What do we want to cover up? Am I going to do any more blue? I think we've got enough blue. Do we have enough blue? I want to get this one too. Yeah, that one's worth it. So should we do that first? I'm, I'm risk. If they do temple again, I'm screwed. So I need to do that right now. Um, So this is enough, right? Just covering up this guy. Yeah. Uh, I could spend three to get. Uh, might be worth it. Yeah, it's worth it. So spend one to the fish gate, two to the bank to get a worker. Worker equals tent movement. Two points. Okay. Uh, blue action, one, two, th or no, yeah, blue action, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I need two gold, so I'm going to have to send a worker here. That's one gold plus this one is two gold. Place this dude here. Spending a coin to blue again. And now I've got three up there. Cool. This is the most I've ever put in endgame scoring. This is awesome. Um, bot's turn. Oops, uh, it has enough for four to get a purple bump and a tent, which gives them gold. Scheme, uh, one worker, nope. Oh, good, they, so they get a worker and a gold. I like when they collect resources, much better. No points, or at <laughs> least less points, there we go. Um, So I don't have any more cards to draw, so I'm really just picking from what's available. And we want to do red. Uh, I don't have any gold to trade. So we won't do this trade. That would have been nice if I could have, but I don't. So I have six red. Uh, how much for a, a four food? Can I get four food? I turned all my food into money. <laughs> I could get two food, three food. I would have liked to get another Levite. Doesn't look like I can. Oh well, all right, so we won't do Levite. Uh, we have three Levites with six red actions. Um, the first would be to put a stone in the temple. That's only worth one point. But I do get a worker, which moves my tent, gives me a red bump, which gives me gold. Okay, uh, I completed a column, so I get two bread as the column finisher. He gets two points as having more Levites, and he gets five coins, I get three coins. Okay, um, that was one action and five banners. I still have one more banner and two more actions. So really all I can afford to do... Yeah. Sure, we'll do this. 
So trade one for a banner, and then I have one action with two banners, so I get a coin and two points. Works for me. Um, turn done. All right, his last action of the game. Uh, he will spend one to the valley gate and four to get two gold. And nice, he's going to do a crappy action. Uh, he's going to build the lowest. This level's full, so it technically doesn't count anymore. So he only has to spend one gold to build there. Oops. And he has three choices. So we divide this into three, and he's picking the middle choice, which is that one. And he doesn't have to pay anyone because he can trace through himself. Um, let's see. Pay one scribe. He did that. Didn't have to pay the workers. Okay, that's it. But he does get a coin. And that's his game. Okay, for us, our last action, uh, we could build. Where can I build at? I've got the two stone. I can get a bread or wood. So maybe I should build that one. Yeah, let's do that one. All right. So I'll pay play. Sorry. The mason here. Um, I need my stone, unfortunately, so I can't trade it for money. And I'll choose to build a wall here. I have six gray, so not like I need anything. Can I, is, it, is there a better place to build it? Could I do it here? I could. That's three money, but that gives him three money. This is uh, one, two, three, plus four is seven. It's too many. No, I have seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think this is a better option right here. So I spent uh, three to clear this, which gives me a red blessing. And then I need to spend a worker here to get a wood and a food. I might not have enough workers for all the food I'm gonna need. Oh no, I'm gonna lose so many points. This could be really bad. Okay, oh well. We, we said fun. Um, maybe I should have done this one and not paid for my instead of that one. Live and learn. Uh, so yeah, so we're going to pay... Which one did we clear? This one. Two wood and a stone. Oh, so I guess I could have traded one stone for two money. I will do that. All right, let's hope this comes up with two wood or two food. Hey, it did. Sweet. We need all the food we can get. All right, uh, and the linking bonus, it's just purple, purple, so I get a stone and a money. And technically, I could do the trade after, so I would have traded this stone as well. Just end the game with rich. We're rich, 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 rich. Okay. That is it. Yeah, I would have put these on the top and bottom, but I don't really care. Okay, so we'll go into prepare for Sabbath. I know this guy needs to come here. Uh, so that's two bread and a coin. I get to pull a worker back who will also go here for two bread and a coin. Then I get two bread, uh, three of these bumps, so I get a gold and two points. Okay, that's my prep. Oh, the judgment. Um, I am beyond the tall guy, so I get five. Him, his judgment, he is... Still way behind, so he'll lose two more points. He lost six points because he just didn't care about the altar at all. That's fine, whatever. And then he will... Any other prep? No, that's it. Okay, so scoring. I get a tuck 
Well, first I need to pay my workers. I have all the workers are out, minus three, so I owe 13 bread. I have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I can't pay two of my workers. It is two VP per worker you can't feed. That is so bad. <laughs> oh man. Oh well. We might make it up for it in money. Um, now we need to tuck. Who do we have available? Just one again this time. Um, one plus number of scholars. I have six. This is seven. It's pro I don't know if I can beat that. Uh, this is five. Our two highest. Oh, that would be eight. That's definitely the one. Uh, this is five walls. I think I built two walls. Yeah, you are not it. And three other So it's definitely the teacher. Okay, so we'll score everything again. Uh, we flipped everything. This was six, didn't change. Uh, number of flames. Oh, we didn't make it to the last. Oh, no, I didn't do. No, I did do this one. Yep, we didn't make it to the last one. So only five flames. Uh, number of gatekeepers. Ah, oh, we didn't. That was maybe a bad one to put out. We still only have three. So four points for that. Definitely not the highest as we could have done. And then our two highest, they're both on level four. So that would be eight points. 61. Okay, so that's our tucked uh, Sabbath. You skip the after Sabbath, um, except for the leader. I'm the altar leader, so I get three points. Nothing else really matters. Yeah, okay. For him, again, scoring uh, gets one coin because he has one extra worker. Um, his highest level is three still. Uh, he has four scholars, five Levites, and two gatekeepers, so he gets five. And then his furthest advance is six. And his number of flames is still one. All right, so he's up one point going into final scoring. Let's do him first. So he's going to convert every gold into three silver. So that's nine. So just make that even ten. And then one VP per five. So two points there. Um, three if he's the altar leader. He is not. So we'll get the VP from his walls and gates. Um, so what ones have a blue on them? This one is worth one. And he's got five more, so that's a total of six. His gates are worth nothing. So six points to him. And then lastly, he's going to get four his scribes. So he's going to get three, three, two, and one, which is nine for a final score of 82. It's actually pretty low for the bot, even on standard difficulty. I've seen him get up in the 90s. Um, but there we go, 80 points. Can we beat him? Our final scoring, convert gold into silver, three silver. So this gold becomes three. Then wood, stone, and food is two silver. Cinders is one, so one, two. And let's get all of this money here. You just select it all, hold it, hit five, and it will break it out for us like that. Uh, actually, we don't want to do it by fives. We want to do it by threes because I score one per three. So that's one, two, three. Oh, we got to do all this. <laughs> Let's do it by five because I can count it easier. So we've got 10, 20, 30, 42. 42 divided by three is 13. Shem, have you any seen somebody finish with 42 money? Like there needs to be a max on this, right? 
13 points for one endgame scoring. Okay. Um, 2VP per development tile. We did all five, so that's 10. We've already beat them. Then three for the altar leader. We are. Oh, I already, did I already get that? No, I did this one. I didn't do the three for the altar leader. Okay. VP from walls and gates. Let's go from this direction. Here's a purple worth two, six, seven, eight. That's it. Not, I mean, that's not bad. And then scribes and these. So one, just from the levels, one, two, three, four, plus 12 is 16. 104 or 114. And then we already scored this dude, but we have this one, which is two per guy up here, six and one per guys down here was three more so nine more 123 my highest score by far i'm usually in the 100 1 105 range i don't know i might have been able to beat the hard bot maybe not um but yeah that was a lot of fun a totally different different game like other games i'm like all the way up on the temple and yeah, this is this. I just completely went endgame scoring and even just dove into one tile. It was kind of fun. <laughs> I liked it. That's the end. If I did make any goofs, um, please put them in the comments below with timestamps. Losing my voice. Um, but yeah, so we played in just over 90 minutes. Sounds great for a solo game. Um, if you're not explaining everything to, on YouTube, you could probably get it down to almost an hour. And uh, a lot of fun. As I mentioned, every game you go a little bit different. You focus on a different thing, um, do different strategies. And uh, I think it's got a lot of replayability with uh, the different tiles that come out and how they come out here. Um, and you definitely don't have enough time or, to do everything, right? You have to focus in on specific things. You're only going to pick a few tiles to influence your game. Uh, scholar research styles and that was good that was great i liked it it's great um go check it out yourself and if you like it then consider backing it or not you can just wait till retail they they are very upfront that they don't give you any benefits other than you get the game first um so if you don't have fomo wait <laughs> right other or or choose to back it to help them uh produce the game and get it out so guys thanks for watching make sure you hit the like button subscribe to my channel and uh, let me know what other games you'd like me to play and feature. I'll see you next time. Catch you later. Bye.